So in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about um, enzymes and go back to the questions that you guys have here. Um, I see three questions that you guys had about enzymes. Two of them were yours, and one, in fact, was mine. Um, and so let's look at the first two here. I'm looking right here on this document that you have. Um, can two enzymes break up and build molecules? And um, Or maybe it was the, can the same enzymes break up and build molecules? And then the second question is, what exactly is a substrate, and what do enzymes need to, why do enzymes need to bind with a substrate? So actually, I'm going to answer the second question before the first. Um, so let's talk a little bit, let's review a little bit about the anatomy of an enzyme. Um, so in the previous video about proteins, I had drawn an NCC backbone that looked kind of like this, squiggles, right, and some weird twisty stuff up here. Um, well, this is a protein, right? So if this protein happened to be an enzyme, then it's going to have a section of it. Sometimes this enzyme um, we draw in a two-dimensional way. I'm going to draw it kind of like um, in a different shape here. So I'm going to draw it like this, right? So um, both of these things are the enzyme. So this is an enzyme. There's two representations. This is supposed to represent a three-dimensional shape, and this is a simplified version of it. Um, and they all, all of these enzymes have um, all enzymes. I'm going to make a note here. Have an active site. All right. So they all have an active site, and that active site for this is enzyme is right here um, and really what's kind of interesting it's it looks like it's just in this pocket but in reality on this enzyme remember that this line is the NCC backbone and there are R groups sticking off of it and the R groups will bind to some other chemical based on its chemical properties like remember the acidic the basic hydrophobic hydrophilic R groups will bind to some other molecule and um, that pocket is called the active site. Now, the thing that binds into the active site, so in this case, it would have to have some kind of shape like this. It would have um, parts of the molecule that stick out and correspond to these R groups. In this case, we might draw it kind of in this shape. And this is the substrate, right? So this is the substrate. And that substrate, we often think of, the other word that we've talked about is, um, in when we mentioned photosynthesis, is a reactant. So if you flip back to your photosynthesis notes and you see that carbon dioxide is a reactant of photosynthesis, there's an enzyme that goes by the name of Rubisco, which is actually... Um, stands for a longer thing called R-U-B-P, um, carboxylase. So it has the a ASC ending, and that means enzyme. ASC refers to enzyme. So lactase is an enzyme that breaks down the substrate, lactose. Um, and so the substrate is really important because it's going to fit with the enzyme. The substrate is going to fit with the enzyme in its active site. Okay? And it's active, sorry, active site. Um, which you can really understand if we bring back this word from the previous video on proteins about the word denature, right? So denaturing will change the shape of this protein and therefore affect the enzyme. And remember that denaturation happens because of pH or temperature, which is really critical. So, um, so if so enzymes are so this is how this kind of impacts your projects here so enzymes break down so they do um, hydrolysis reactions some of the enzymes will do hydrolysis reactions others will do um, condensation reactions building up molecules but they're all proteins that are affected by optimal pH and temperature so um, your body, so your body, so human body, um, all organisms really need these optimal pH and temperatures, but so do plants, 
remember that plants um, plants have these optimal temperatures and pHs too and we talked about temperature so if you look back to your notes on your diagrams your your charts your graphs we looked at one that was the effective temperature on oxygen production which is to measure photosynthesis and beyond an optimal temperature the rate of photosynthesis comes crashing down partly because of stomata closed to prevent water loss through transpiration but secondly the proteins the enzymes that control the reaction of photosynthesis denature they change shape now when they change shape the active site changes shape and when the active site changes shape it doesn't fit with the substrate the reaction doesn't move forward quickly right the reactants can't turn into then the products so these enzymes have to be recreated um, and they have to be recreated by ribosomes because enzymes are a type of protein they're made by the ribosomes on either the rough endoplasmic reticulum or the free-floating ribosomes depending on where those um, those enzymes do their work um, if the if the protein works outside of the cell it's made at the rough ER and then it's transported to the membrane by the Golgi apparatus or the Golgi body if it if the enzyme is to work inside of a cell it's made by the free floating ribosomes that are um, quote unquote floating in the cytoplasm okay um, I hope that answers some of your questions that actually hit both of the questions that you asked now about lactose intolerance it's a little bit more complicated but I, I think you can handle this so we'll try to keep it as simple um, as possible so lactose intolerance is basically the idea that um, as as um, one matures really we're talking about like ages five folks five year old or five years old or older um, we make less lactase right not lactose lactase this is the enzyme that breaks down the the disaccharide lactose so as one matures we make less of it that's lactose intolerance and most of us are that way but some of us have inherited a mutation right we, some of us have inherited a mutation that um, does not um, reduce the amount of lactase into adulthood so that would allow you and your ancestors if you had this mutation to be able to eat lactose into adulthood um, but most of us um, have problems digesting lactose now even if you have this mutation that allows you to break down lactose you could overeat lactose if you ate too much lactose and your enzyme your enzymes um, stop or were unable to process all the lactose you'd end up with the same effect so um, it's just the amount that the threshold it takes more to get here so you can ha these people can handle more lactose and these people can handle less lactose this doesn't mean that you're not making any lactase if you're lactose intolerant it means you're making less but if either way you could still have too much and that causes um, what we call GI problems so this is gastrointestinal so gastro meaning stomach and then intestinal or meaning intestines problems so the lactose that you might be consuming so lactose is gonna I'm gonna see if I can scroll down a little bit more so lactose the lactose sugar feeds E. coli 
which is a bacteria that lives in your um, intestines. Escherichia coli has an enzyme that's that's analogous to your lactase. So analogous meaning that it doesn't have the same structure, but it does the same job. It still breaks down lactose into the two monosaccharides, galactose and glucose, and then it processes that glucose and galactose to make its own ATP. So you're feeding that E. coli and helping it thrive when you eat too much lactose. Um, well, that E. coli, when you're feeding it, so they reproduce a lot, they release methane, um, which is a gas. So in a previous video, you saw this as CH4. It's a gas um, that is really what you burp and fart out. Um, so you're making more of that, but that stuff cr builds up in your intestines and in your stomach and causes abdominal pain. Um, but also this increased lactose in your small intestines and large intestines pulls water out of your body, right? That process is osmosis. It's pulling water, pulls water out of your body, and that leads to diarrhea. I think I spelled that right. Diarrhea. Um, so there are lots of problems with this caused by this either bacteria or the high solute that's in your body because you've eaten more lactose than your body can handle. Either if you're lactose intolerant, you just can handle less of it, or even if you're not lactose intolerant, there's still a limit. Um, the problem that we have in, it's particularly in the United States, is that we, as a culture, eat as if we're not lactose intolerant, but many of us genetically are. Because lactose intolerance is, con is all about this lactase enzyme. It's an enzyme, right? So I want to just make sure you remember that this is a type of protein. And if you think back to your cell cycle notes, DNA codes for RNA, which codes for protein. So really, you do inherit your enzymes, unless there's some weird mutation. Um, but most of your enzymes are inherited through your DNA. Um, and that's, that's critically important to know that, that lactose intolerance often is a genetic condition. Sometimes, though, it could be environmental because you had some damage to your small intestine and your lactase is not being produced. But uh, most of the time it's genetic. Okay, I'm going to stop there. I see him in 13 minutes.